and I've joined here by Simon. Hi, Simon. Hi, hello. Are you comfortable not on a sofa? Yes, I'm, uh, yeah, this is okay. Is it all right, Pierre? <laughs> it's good. I'm s- sorry we couldn't fit the sofa in the studio, you know. I know, I'm a little bit disappointed, but I can, I can cope. <laughs> okay. You're Simon Paul Sutton, but you called yourself Simon on the sofa, and that's a website, isn't it? Correct, yes. Um, so, but you do interviews like me. Yeah. From a sofa, and you're braver than me because people can actually see you on camera. Yeah. And if they saw what I got up to sitting in the chair, I'd <laughs> believe you, you wouldn't know. I've got to be careful what I say there. Yeah. I won't reveal anything, I promise. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, um, you love doing interviews with people, but what gave you an idea to do interviews on a sofa, and why? D- what kind of people do you interview? Um, good question. Hello to everyone listening, and I hope you're sitting comfortably on your sofas. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it comes from a number of different places, really, um, and yeah, they're, they're sort of. I, I was sort of moving away from interviews, moving into more of a conversation. So a lot of a lot of the times, people do feel that they're interviews because I'm, you know, navigating the talk um, in many respects. But what I wanted to do and what come up was about four years ago. I um, I, I realised that people didn't really, and especially myself, didn't really know how to communicate their truth. Didn't really know how to communicate. Um, I know this word transparently is used a lot nowadays, but they didn't really know how to communicate transparently, free from fear and, and just sharing exactly what they, they're thinking and feeling. Um, and I noticed that in a lot of my communication and a lot of conversations I was having with other people. And um, seeing as I have a, a film background, I've been a, an actor in, in, in uh, producing films for the last sort of 12 years since I left theatre school, I've got a real passion for film and, and, um, and I think it's a great medium to express, um, to express whatever it is you, know, you want to express. So that was my choice for using, right. uh, yeah, for, you know, for yeah. using uh, video. And the big question is, what actually inspired, inspired you to start doing this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know it's a long story. No, yeah, it is a long story, but I mean, in a nutshell, for the people listening, uh, the, the, the inspiration was, you know, that if everybody could really communicate their true feelings from a place of love, not fear, then it would change the vibration of our um, our uh, species, basically, and the way that we show up in life. And I think that that would then uh, change a lot of the uh, dysfunction that we all uh, we all have to endure at some point in uh, in our journeys. Mm. Now you've been on a journey. Talking about journeys, you've been on a journey yourself. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about that journey. Uh, it's been yourself. a journey, a, a long journey, <laughs> to to you know finding yourself and who you naturally are which enables you to then chat very eloquently to other people and bring out the best of them what because what actually brought you to that point because you were talking earlier about you know your life was a bit rough just before then yeah yeah um yeah probably um not yeah not four years ago it's been uh i don't you know sometimes you look at your life and um we sort of label it or judge it and we say it's bad and good and bad and, you know, and that's wrong and this is right and so on. And, and more often than not, I like to move away as much as I can from labelling and saying what's right or wrong because that can cause a, a, lot of, um, a lot of conflict and resistance for us anyway. But in terms of, you know, my background was very much, uh, you know, I grew up in a, in a, uh, a council estate, a number of different council estates when I was younger. And, um, you know, I had a, in my mind, it was, I had a great, I really actually had, what I thought was a really good uh, childhood because you only know what you know, you know. So um, I grew up, you know, went to usual schools and so on, come out of school and sort of 15 started smoking marijuana and sort of going down the, the, the path of, uh, of uh, petty crime and, and that led into more serious crimes and uh, the, the starting of the marijuana led into more serious, uh, not serious, but more stronger drugs and, you know, and I was very much exploring with that for a number of years. Um, so I was, I was sort of going down, you know, the, you could call that a, a slightly darker path than, than most. A number of different things happened along that path. And uh, when I was 18, uh, a number of court cases led to, uh, to, um, to just a you know, real awareness that um, after spending some time in a, you know, a uh, um, institute, and uh, an offenders institute, I, I was very much, I felt that something had to change. And um, and when I come out of that, I started to embark on a journey of, of I thought I wanted to be an actor and I thought that would be a good path. So I followed that path for nigh on, well, it's been 12 years, but I mean, it, it took about five years to really transform myself out of the um, conditioning that I was I was finding myself in. And, and you know, that was that was quite um, that was quite, quite a hard path to, to, yeah. to really change, you know. So how did you start? 
What did you do? Ask your friends? Obviously not. <laughs> I phoned a friend. You phoned yeah. a friend. What? I mean, you know, here you go. You've got people listening in now, maybe yeah. in this zone where you were. And where do you start? What did you do? Yeah, that's a great question. Where do I start? Where did I start? Um, I started by talking a lot about what I was going to do. And, and my, um, I suppose my actions and promises were not that, that, in, um, that much in alignment with my beliefs. And um, so what was happening is that I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, talking it. But my actions were still showing up from a very sort of dysfunctional, sort of negative perspective because I was still hanging around in the same circles. I was still doing the crime. I was still at the weekends, you know, smoking. And, you know, and it was like it was almost like I'm trying to change, but. I'm talking it, but nothing is really happening. Um, so then what happened is I actually took the step to go to a, um, to a course, which was an improvisational course, funnily enough. And uh, that was all about, um, uh, you know, it was sort of acting, but it was more about just expressing yourself as well. And this was really beneficial for me. So what I did by doing that, and if anybody's listening in terms of wanting some sort of... Uh, um, it's funny, it's something you mentioned to me before, actually, about just sort of stopping and going that something has to change. Do you remember uh, mentioning yeah. that to me before? Mm. Um, and it was very much... A, 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 there was a number of different times that that happened, maybe several, maybe even, you know, a dozen or more, um, where I just kept stopping and going, this isn't working, you know? Yeah. And then trying a different path. And it's like, oh, man, I've come full circle again. What's happening? Why is it not working? Do you see what I mean? So it was very much trial and error. So I don't know if that answers the, 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 the question succinctly, but it's very much breaking the mould mm. and really diving into the unknown and going, you know what, I've just got to break this mould and I'm going to try something different. There's a lot of books out there and a lot of um, transformational gurus. Um, when we were talking about it, you know, they're cashing in on it, but, um, you know, from the talk that I went to you, that you did, um, and you ask people, you know, have you read this book, you've listened to that speaker, what yep. would you say about that? Uh, in terms of... The, the people that I've listened to and the books that I've read? Well, yeah, you've read them, you know, you've, you've re seen the film, read the book. Yeah. How does that actually help and does it? Or does it just, it, is yeah. it just part of... Part of the transformation, yeah. yeah. I, I, think, I think every action you take helps. Um, you know, I think every experience that you have helps. And I also think that every, um, yeah, every, everything you listen to, you know, depending on where you're at, can, can benefit you in some way. I think it's more often than not that we can also become addicted to listening to um, people talk or we can become addicted to reading and we can start to use the words and what happens is that if we've got we've all got every single one of us every human that I've come across so far and every 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 thing that I've looked into and research ev we all have addictions addictions are seem to be this natural habit that we pick up and we become addicted to things whether it's drugs whether it's um, hobbies whether it's relationships whether it's um, technology whether it's reading you know whatever it is a lot of the times with the self-help um, and the uh, events and stuff is that they're, they're, they're giving you pointers and things that you can actually implement into your life to really help transform it. Mm -hmm. And what happens that people don't implement the actions because more often than not, we move the addiction into something else so we don't actually deal with the core um, uh, root of what is actually creating dysfunction in our lives or or maybe just you know just not creating the life that we want to experience you know we might not be having any experiences that we want with people we might not be you know we might not have the the, the love in our life or we might you know we might just not enjoy our, ex our experience here you know and um, so so in terms of I don't think they're rubbish I just think that you have to really <laughs> I know I said this to you earlier but there's a great line which is to know and not to do is not yet to know and that's, I'll just say that again because I know sometimes it's a bit of a, a mind mess, but it's to know and not to do is not yet to know. <clears throat> this has stuck with me for years. When I first heard it, it fried me for a, a, a long time. I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I get it, I get it, I get it, and I, I wasn't really getting it. But the point is if you don't implement the action and you don't have the experience, you really don't know anything. I think you just touched on something important because you can read a book when you realise actually that book was written out of somebody else's experience. Yes. So what you're really trying to do is trying to replicate their experience, not just read it and kind of store it and think, got that. Yeah. Um, now I've got a tricky question because <laughs> you mentioned addiction, you yes. know, and you mentioned relationships. And Now what is the difference between a passion and an addiction? Mm. Good question, eh? Yeah. 
Yes, that's a great question. A passion and addiction. Because mm. I'm not addicted to doing radio, but I'm passionate about it. Yeah, totally. I think um, a passion benefits you, an addiction suppresses you. Maybe. Okay, right. Um, so a, a passion can elevate you and it can expand you and it can open up your awareness and it can transform your life and don't get me wrong I'm not saying that it, this is about right and wrong or the light and the dark mm. from addiction I've learned a lot from addiction people write magnificent um, musical you know songs you know there's a lot of people that are out there that are addicted to drugs and addicted to things and, and, and some great magic comes out of that I'm not saying that, but more often than not an addiction is quite destructive because it overpowers you and takes control of you. You're not in control of it. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, putting drugs on one side, there's yeah. lots of addictions. People of get addicted to shopping. Yes, food. Um, food and so on. Yeah. And it's usually something that they're trying to replace mm -hmm. an empty feeling inside. Okay. And they keep an addiction is just basically overbalance, you know, an, an imbalance. So it's too much of one thing. How did you discover what your passion was? Mm. <laughs> You're firing them at me. Um, I really... I suppose I've always been quite passionate for life anyway. I've always really had a passion for life. I mean, even when... Even when I was younger and, you know, from, from an outside perspective, I might say that I was in a, you know, dysfunctional uh, reality, which it was very, you know, in many respects, it quite dark. But, you know, I was very passionate for life and passionate for people and passionate for experiences. So, so I suppose the passion's been there. Um, my passion now to, to, to actually express love and allow people to, to find their own love, that's come from the realisations that I've seen the transformations of my own life. So because I've experienced those transformations and I've sort of had an experience of both, I'm just going to say both sides. I mean, there's many sides, like you said, it's, it's multi-layered. Because I've had the experience of the two, now my passion is very much driven from the experience of like, oh my, this is not only a magical world, but this is a magical experience. Not only is my relationships more fruitful, more abundant, not only is my every moment more abundant, you know, everything has just gone tenfold abundance in everything from, you know, every single experience um, in this moment. So having that experience, I think my passion is actually, is something that's not even in my control, to be honest with you, Ashley. And I think it's actually some driving force took, took me over and just said, I, people just, you know, it's like when you, I don't know people listening, you know what it's like when you have an experience and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, I've got to share that, I've got to share that with my friend or I've got to go and tell mum or I've got to go and tell dad or I've got to go and just got to share it. And, and that is, you, we've all experienced it. It's not like we haven't experienced it. It's, it's that energy, that lust for life, that joy, that, you know, that, that, um, that warmth, all of that can be experienced all the time. You mentioned the word abundance. It's quite normal for people when they think of abundance, they look outside. Mm. You know, and they look at financial abundance, they look at cars, houses, the lot. Yes. Now, when, when you say abundance, I know you mean something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I probably mean, it's like, oh, I mean it all, really. I suppose abundance for me is, is, is about stepping into what it is that you really are part of. And you are part of something so, I mean, I can't even give you the words on this radio station to share with what you're a part of. But you're, you're a part of something that is so magnificent, so, you know, infinite, so unknown. We can't even describe it with words. We have no way of doing that. But when we let go of all this exterior stuff, which we think is abundance, we fall into this almost just bliss of you know it's like a it's like a it's like a, a void of a i don't even know it's like awareness i really find it difficult sometimes to to describe it because it it really is beyond words and if anybody listening to this has been following um you know a lot of teachers or or people that point the way to this more often than not everybody can only point away the point is it's all around you at all times it's the elements it's the wind it's the trees it's the it's the sound of the trees that they make to you it's the it's the stars the moon it's the it's the cuddling it's a kiss it's a it's a it's a warm feeling from somebody that you've just met it's a warm feeling from somebody you've not met it's just it's it's abundance for me is 
everything that is is mm. <laughs> does that help i don't know if that really describes it you know that that state you're talking about is what a child is like yes they are into everything yes. and they are lost in it yes. and they're connected to it all and then something happens yes and we won't go down that road yeah um so in a way it's like reconnecting back to that inner child that once felt complete and connected to everything and there was no resistance if you felt like giving mm. somebody a hug you gave them a hug yeah. and there was no condition mm, no was condition it? That's beautiful. no condition yes, at all exactly it's like if you felt it you responded as a child didn't you and you'd even want to go and give a str- uh, your ice cream to a stranger yeah exactly until you learned you shouldn't be doing that yeah. but and in, um obviously as an adult you, you you do learn new things and you learn not to trust and that's a big one that's because a one. i think you were saying earlier you know Unless you can look inside and feel trust for yourself, how can you trust anybody else or anything else? Totally, yeah. That's a, that was a, you know that was a big realization for me, and that's why I now do the um, the workshops and the things that I'm doing <coughs> and, and the stuff that I'm writing about is very much. You might have heard this um, that until you love yourself, you can't love another. And I mean, I've been in relationships, and I've spoke about this, and I've been with people in my life, and. And, and it's like, well, they go, no, but I do love you. I do love you. I really do love you. And uh, what, what I realized, and this is very hard sometimes for people to really grasp, and it was hard for me to grasp, is that when I had this realization, I called my mum and I said to her, I goes, I'm really, really sorry, but I've, n- I've never actually loved you. And, you know, I ended up crying that day because w- what it was is I realized that everything that I'd been saying up until that point and using the word, I love you, using that four-letter word, it was actually coming from such an... A, a, an unconscious and an insincere space I was completely unaware of this but it was coming from a place of fear coming from a place of of no, no mindfulness no consideration and no and no real awareness of what that means when you really are sharing love and, and my mum has always shown me complete unconditional love and I mean it was it's deeply unconditional in every respect and everything that I've ever done and it was the, that moment when I like, that sort of saying sank for me it was like well, if you can't really love yourself as you are right now in all that you are and all that you've been, and, and, and love means many things as well, Ashlyn. It's not just about, you know, one word. I mean, if you break love down, it, it encapsulates everything. So we're talking forgiveness, gratitude, appreciation. I mean, you know, I can't really list it all now. But um, the point is, is that it really does take you beyond the love that you think you're experiencing, basically. And it's not just love for a person. No love for it's the love for every single thing yeah the abundance we yeah, live in actually yeah, the air we yeah, breathe the yeah, trees everything yeah it's a, it's, a, it's for a full existence it's a, it's a, it's a, it, 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 again it's a love beyond words and I, and i'm mm. using the word love again if you look up the word love in the dictionary i know i did this and you come to my talk but if you look up the word love in the dictionary it represents nothing that we're talking about <laughs> it doesn't even say or describe any of this so we're using as a human species at this point of evolution we're just using the word to point somewhere I'm just wondering, and you know, this is very live in my mind as well at the point, which is maybe we need new words to describe mm. new feelings, new language yes. that doesn't exist. Yes. Because as we're starting to experience new feelings, maybe there just isn't the words for them. We could make them up. Yeah, I, definitely. And it's funny you say that. One of the <laughs> first talks on the sofa was with, with, with a wonderful woman called uh, Bridget Finclair. And uh, <clears throat> she was talking about bubbles of bliss. And we were talking about work and we were talking about love and so on. It was one of the very first talks that I actually uh, that I actually filmed, and she said the same thing. She was like, "You know, these damn words we got—they're so limiting. Um, you know, it's like we need to make up new words to represent what we're even sharing and pointing to." And it's funny as well because I don't know if anybody listening has, has read anything from uh, Eckhart Tolle. He says one great thing that always resonated with me, and he said, "How can you, um, with?" The, the vowels that we have, A, E, I, O, and U, and the, you know, the, the, the sounds that we make, like this, sh, uh, uh, you know, and these sounds that we make, yeah. how can they actually describe what we are? Wow. That's profound, isn't it? I know. You know, that, that was, for me, when I read that, I was like, exactly. <laughs> so I'm trying, my, I'm trying my best to point somewhere, but trust me, it's, like, it's probably not doing a great job. <laughs> no, I've, you know, I've, that's why music is written. That's why people attempt to describe a feeling in music because no words can describe it. Yeah, totally. And it's, you know, no, you don't need to know a language of music. It, it reaches inside and 
you feel something and you're responding. That, yeah. that, that's a really. I'm just going to touch on that if that's okay. If we've got time, is that that was that was that's a really beautiful thing as well because you often hear that in silence, you know, stillness speaks, for example, and and, and silence silence is very very powerful. We're all quite scared of silence. Um, I recently went to a, a a retreat where it was ten days complete silence, and it was. It, everybody was like, oh, God, Simon, how are you going to be quiet for 10 for, <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to sh- shut up for, te- you know, for, for 10 days? Yeah. And, and um, I don't know what they mean by that, actually. I had no clue, you know, as if I would talk a lot um, or something along those lines. <laughs> and um, basically, that was bliss. And not only was it bliss, it was the easiest part of the 10 days, believe it or not. And, you know, and I wasn't even concerned about the not talking because... The, the the non-communication was so so powerful it was it was i can't really describe it all now but it was very if, if anybody's contemplating doing a 10-day um silent meditation retreat or you know is contemplating spending some time um in silence and um, it do it because it really is it's really really powerful it's a powerful experience were, were you uh, were you allowed to attempt to communicate with other in other ways with people? No, no, just no, no. completely solitary. Yeah, there was well, there was, there was um, it, 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 you're separated into two uh, male and female, so you're only in like males um, in in the meditation that you're in in the uh, the area, and there was at least seventy seventy men, and the other side is about seventy or eighty uh, uh, women, you know, sort of between the two, and uh, basically no, you have no uh, communication, no talk with anybody else. But the crazy thing is, you know, what's funny, Ashley and, and the people listening is that you see a lot of communication going on. Yeah, but you do. You see a lot of communication going on. And it really is great as a coming from an actor's background as well. It's, it's amazing as well because I love people watching and I love people anyway, just in general. And I think we're fascinating um, as it all is, but I love people watching. And when you're in that silence and you start to watch people's actions from their body, oh, that's a that's a lesson worth experiencing. Well, they actually say that I say they, but um, most of communication goes on unconsciously. It's like when you first meet someone, you're already communicating with that person, already working out about that person before you even open your mouth. And quite often, it's the words that spoil it because you never really can communicate what you feel totally. you're picking up. Um, we've got about four minutes up until the news. No problem. So what we'll do is we'll take a, a music break up to the news. And then we'll join you off to the news. Excuse me. <coughs> and if you'd like to ask Simon a question, we're going to open the phone lines now. And they're not for voting. They're to, uh, if you've got any questions you'd like uh, to ask Simon, or you can alternatively send us an email. That's studio at radio around. Uh, Simon and I were talking about language and how it's really difficult to describe a feeling when there are no words for it. Um, and so music is a very powerful thing in doing that. Now, words, we, we are restricted in communicating with words. And you have people on your sofa and you, you will use words to communicate <laughs> together. Yes. From what, what kind of people are you inspired to have on your sofa with you? To interview, I should say. <laughs> uh, Make that clear. Yeah, well, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like everyone on my sofa. Um, <laughs> I mean, basically, the, 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 whole, the whole concept was that... Um, Every single person is magnificent. So it wasn't about me actually choosing. I just wanted to talk to all walks of life because all walks of life, we're, you know, we're all unique in our own right and we're all, uh, all magical. So as I said, the conversations were very much just wanting to talk to, you know, whatever mm. flowed. So I haven't actually chosen anybody for the sofa. They've actually chosen me. Have in, they? Yeah, mm. in terms of um, each person's come on, somebody's seen them, they've either recommended a friend or they've then somebody's seen the talk and said, I'd like to sit, would you like to sit on the sofa? And then right. I'd like to, I actually have now about 45 people that want to sit on the sofa. So I have, I have a list, um, which that is, that sort of happened in the last few months because more and more people are seeing it. So now it's a case of I'm having to, you know, go, OK, mm. I'm just letting people know that there's a long list. As soon as they come in, I'm just sharing transparently, funnily enough, and just saying that there's a long list. And, you know, there's a few people that obviously I'd like to uh, I'd like to, you know, get on the sofa. But also since the because this is all about me as well, it has to be about me. So the sofa was all about me and my own unfolding mm. and exploring love and exploring reality and so on. Where, where it's going at the moment as well is I, I'm, I'm thinking of maybe making the, um, the talks have a theme and then 
because more people have contacted me, stick with a the theme of the, the, the evening, and maybe I could speak with two people. Do you see what I mean? That's a really good idea. Yeah. yeah. So I'm mm. sort of changing the dynamics. I'm mm. going through that at the moment. I'm going away next month, and when I come back, I'm going to really play with the with the dynamics. And it's all just you know unfolding and, and evolving. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about some of the people that really inspired you that you've interviewed so far, uh, and why they inspired you. Okay. Um, Every single one. <laughs> I bet he's like, I knew he was going to say that. Um, every single one, because one is that they've shared themselves completely vulnerably and openly, and they've committed to um, to the conversation, and I love them for doing that. And um, every one of them, because they're all unique, and they all share themselves in that um, uniqueness. So I, I don't like any one of them any more than the other. So the people that you've interviewed, um, are they... Have they written books? Do they do healing? Do, what, are they holistic? You know, yeah, do they practice anything in particular? Because you said you had anybody on your sofa, but I'm sure you wouldn't just put anybody on there, would you? Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, I even said, you know, and I don't like to use the word tramp, but I even said, you know, the man off the street, because personally I think that it's not about whether you've written a book or whether you've, you're known by anybody. Um, you can have a way... You can have deep connection to all it is and you might just be classed as a tramp for example and more often than not people that are are, are deemed as tramps and criminals and all these other things they're only rebelling against the, what they know to be false and what they know to be wrong so fundamentally they're only living in their own fear but action in, in a different way so more often than not criminals are just in fear you know and I was very much in fear when I was a criminal and a, a tramp is just going against what he can see or she can see which is just not functioning right you know and then they end up because of the resistance they end up in deep um, um, dysfunction themselves which fundamentally fuels the system which they're trying to break and this is the this is what what I'm trying to share with people is that you can't you can't break the system by trying to resist it you have to go deeper within yourself connect to something beyond that and then create a new and it comes from deep acceptance forgiveness allowing understanding and bringing, really bringing the awareness of the conditioning and the awareness of your lies and pain into light um, and in, just into awareness, you know, when you bring all that into awareness. So I think I deviated a bit there, Ashley, but in terms of the, the people that are now on the sofa, yes, they have, some of them have written books. Yes, some of them are, are doing healing modalities. And, and if, if, if you get to look at them, they are, they are mixed and varied. I have, like, for example, I have an amazing 14-year-old boy on the sofa, and he was just, he was like, he was so cool he's had a massive transformation he was addicted to the xbox and his xbox broke and he realized that he was addicted to it yeah. and he's just he, he channeled his energy from the xbox into his music and now he's he's rapping he's created a little uh, production company yeah. and he's rapping about um society and about life and about you know what he feels as a, as a as a teenager growing up in this world and some of his songs are really really powerful um, and I just, I love that, you know, and there's, a, there's another amazing um, person that, that uh, I bumped into at an event and, you know, up until a year ago, he was, you know, he was able-bodied and so on. He dived into a river in um, Colombia, I think, and disabled himself completely. He's completely in a, in a, in a, he's a wheelchair, he, can, he can't move, he can only move his right arm and he's an amazing guy. Prior to this, he's still meditating, he's doing his thing. And, you know, I'm hoping to speak with him in the park. Um, it was supposed to happen this summer. I'm hoping it's going to happen after October. So, so literally, I mean, it's just people are coming to me and it's very much, I want to create almost a, 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 the awareness that we are all the same. We're all unique and we all have something to share, you know. Absolutely. Actually, we have got an email here from Jeff from St Albans. Um, says, uh... Oh, I think we just answered that. What was the most moving experience on the sofa? And for listeners listening in, we are talking about interviewing now on the sofa. <laughs> and the young lad was being interviewed by you on... You have to say these things, don't oh, you? Oh, for sure. This is the world we live in. This is the world we live in, yes, yeah. totally. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. The, the, I'll just open this one. Uh, yeah, Caroline, actually. Caroline from Radlett. How did you learn to love yourself? That's a good question. What advice can you give me? Ah, How wonderful. did you learn to love yourself? Yeah, that's a great question. Um... Looking in the mirror was a, was a, was a real great thing, and uh, looking in the mirror completely um, at how magnificent you are already. Look at your, you know, I was very much looking at <coughs> looking at my eyes and, and understanding how they function. Looking at my skin, looking at looking at me completely. You know, I know you say nakedly in the mirror. I'm not saying to you all go and get naked now and get get the big mirrors out, but but um, yeah, very much looking looking at yourself. Really, you know, looking deeply at who you are and 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 how how. I mean, 
that you're even here and that you're even able to talk and even able to interact and and you've even you know out of all the sperm cells that went through in order to try to create you just one created you and that one is you now and you've come into form in this unknown unfathomable experience and it's just beyond belief and if you can just celebrate that to start with forget whether you've got a partner forget whether you've got a job title forget all of this outside exterior illusionary rubbish come back to who you are and um, one of the things I do do is I, I studied the body and I, I looked into um, health nutrition and and I really started to you know just look at my body and I, I started this funnily enough when I was quite young about 17 18 and it come from me actually being very down on myself because I thought not only did I have a stunt I thought I had a stunt in my growth because I was I was shorter than everybody else and I had a big issue with the uh, with the size of my genitalia would you believe it or not and I was going like, I was having a big emotional breakdown from like 16 to 18 and, and so on and then um, I just started to like you know really get into the body I used to go to the gym and look you know look at the body and and so on and, and that changed that started to make me appreciate how magnificent i i am to even be here yeah I, that is such a simple thing but so often we look at our body as if it's separate to us and complain about it yes. rather than being awed and amazed at what it can actually do if if it was left to me to remember to breathe i'd be dead by now <laughs> or you know the amazing things that we can't see going on on the inside, yes, yes. which do, we do take for granted. Can you imagine what's going on? Do you know what has to? Do you know what is going on within your body in order to just make you function? Like, oh. like, like the, the, the internal organs. I mean, they would need to be celebrated and appreciated every day. And do you know what fascinates me even more? Just quickly, mm. is that the sheer abuse that they endure as well. Like we completely abuse our body and abuse our, our internal organs, abuse our uh, intestines yeah. and everything. And look what they do. They just keep us going, keep us going, keep us going. And, and it's like when you start to appreciate that, that expands your appreciation, you know. It, yeah, it does. Absolutely. How can you not? I mean, lovely children. They are just so in the moment, aren't they? Yeah, pure. Okay. Um, Anna from St Albans has sent an email saying... saying uh, how do I get over the fear of losing someone? How do you get over the fear of losing somebody? Yeah. Cool, that's not a small question, is No, it? it's not a small question. How long do we have? <laughs> no. And you're not an expert? <laughs> no, I'm not an expert. Um, I, I mean, I often ask myself, where is the fear derived from? So more often than not, it's, it, I bring everything back to myself. So it's, 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 if you're fearing something, then you know, there's, there's something within you that, or within me, if it's me, within me that... That is um, <clears throat> that is needing some sort of awareness or some sort of uh, recognition of some kind. So it's not it's not often. Sorry, it's more often that we're not actually concerned about the thing that we're going to lose or the person we're going to lose. It's about how we're going to feel to deal with that loss. So so what happens is that when we come deeper within ourselves and we can connect to ourselves on a much more authentic, mindful space, we we really bring loss into perspective and fundamentally loss is just fear and most people are fundamentally um, fear in life and in terror of death and and basically when you look at that when you really break that down everything in our daily life is about loss are we going to lose our life when are we going to are we going to live till we're 70 or 80 and we're going to lose our family or our children going to die are we going to lose our job are we going to have enough money we're going to lose it's loss 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 and the problem with that is when you're in a in a deep state of fear to, uh, and, and loss you're then your whole body and this is uh, this is from the the work of bruce lipton your whole body goes into protection mode and when your every single cell within your body is in protection mode it can't experience growth, and growth is love. Yes, yeah, so just using those two words again. So what happens is when we're fearing loss or we're fearing, um, you know, loneliness or any, anything that we're fearing to do with loss, it fundamentally comes from that deep um, unawareness and unconsciousness. Because at the end of the day, the, 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 the sheer truth of this existence is that, you know, every one of us is going to leave this body. Regardless of what happens after, we're going to leave this body. And today, just as we're sitting here now, Hundreds of thousands of people have died and hundreds of thousands have been born and, you know, people have been killed right now and people are going through trauma and some people are getting married and every single thing you can imagine is happening right now. So we just have to come back to ourselves. I feel this is what I've done for myself and my granddad passed away last year and I went through a really interesting process there with death. It was really, you know, brought to the forefront of, of my experience and, you know, 
until we bring death into awareness and really love and appreciate death as part of this existence, as part of the whole, you really can't live. That was the most profound thing I think I've ever heard anyone say. That was just amazing. Absolutely. So the greatest freedom of all is not having a fear of losing. No. Live, oh, I'm, I've got tingles up my head just then. That's mad. You know, when you, you know, I don't know if anyone listening, you say so. When you sometimes you feel something that, that really allows us to free ourselves from the, yeah. the, the shackles and the, and, and, the, and the grief of life, you, I get these like mad tingles up my head and stuff. And on my, on my back, it's happening now. And yeah, it really is. It is love, lo- love death, love life, love it all, and live now, you know? Yeah. Well, something much bigger than us has got designs for us, which. I'm sure it knows better than us. Okay, so just before we close the interview, I want to just check. So if people want to uh, see the interviews you've been doing, what's the website, Simon? The website is just simply simononthesofa.com. Obviously the www before that, but you don't have to use that so much now, do you, on the uh, the search engine? So just simononthesofa.com. And um, yes, there's about 22 talks up at the moment. Um, we've got three going up in the next uh, in the next uh, few weeks. And um, yeah, we're all, you know we're just going to continue to bring these uh, bring these people sharing their experiences yeah. for other people to empower themselves. Basically, yeah, it's been a wonderful pleasure having you with us. Thank you very much thank and you. for sharing some very passionate feelings. Thank you and, and a, thank and you and for everyone listening. Yes, yeah, thank you very much to the listeners who also sent in uh, the emails with the really really good questions. And Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you, Ashley. It's difficult to say goodbye, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) See you again. Farewell. Thank you.